And Cyril Gan does a lot of shit that's very unusual. Like, first of all, he stands totally sideways, and he does, like, a twisting kick with his front leg to throw a front kick. You know how he yeah, does that? Yeah, Very yeah. weird. Yeah, it's... Like, he stands totally sideways, and he, like, twists his leg in. He doesn't stick it up and stab it forward. He, like, twists it and go in. Yeah. You never did that? Well, Taekwondo. It's a twisting like, kick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's called a twisting kick. Okay. Yeah. So, no, that's him throwing side kicks. Uh, but, spinning heel kick yeah, anyway, he threw a crazy. spinning heel kick. He, he throws this kick off the front leg. If you go to Tai Tuivasa. Um, the one he was landing to that front, oh to the body. God, that was breaking. Dude, that, Tai is so tough, though, He's man. so tough. Tai is so tough. That was a crazy-ass fight. And that was a perfect fight to, like, showcase what Cyril Gaunt's capable of. Because his, his movement, the fluidity of his combinations. And, I mean, the guy moves like a middleweight. Yeah. He's 240-plus pounds. This was a great ass fight. So he stands sideways and he throws this front kick when he gets distance. He throws this front kick off the sideways stance and he turns his body. Oh, there's that kick to the body, oh. those those round kicks. Oh, this is the finishing secret. Oh. Yeah. Very very interesting, man, watching the two there, there it is. Oh, See yeah. it? Yeah. See how he throws it? And he throws it off of both sides with the front leg. He's the most agile and the the like, probably the most technical of all the heavyweight strikers. Cyril's very well rounded when it comes to his striking. He's so smooth, yeah. Oh, so f and he's like intelligent, like mm -hmm. and he understands the distance. All right, yeah. now this is a knee distance. This is not kick distance. Very interesting fight. So for John, it's going to be, can John take him down? Can John, like, how does John perform at heavyweight? Can John close the distance? Is he as fast? What is the three years off like? Is he hungrier and even better because he's fired up? And he, you know, like, y'all must have forgot he's got that mindset. He usually does too, yeah. right? Remember he was always that guy that would want to beat you at your own game. Oh, you're yeah. a wrestler, I'll wrestle you. You're a striker, I'll strike with you. Yeah. So well, if he comes out there thinking, Zero Gone, you're a... Uh, Smooth striker, I'll, I'll smooth you. I don't know. It's also a first fight at heavyweight. We really don't know how he's going to respond when he gets hit by a big heavyweight. <sighs> we don't know anything. Yeah. And I mean, it's all, years, and it's also John is older now, you know. Just that time partying, off, honestly. A lot of partying. Yeah. John parties, you know. I don't know what he's been doing. Maybe he's been living clean over the last few years. I don't yeah. know. I know but, I saw him with uh, Cejudo now, and yeah, maybe that changed. That Cejudo mindset will help him too. So I like that. I like Cejudo's mindset. And I like that fight ready camp. I, I think what Henry brings to the table is very unique. His mindset is really incredible. And, you know, I talked to Mighty Mouse about it. I had Mighty Mouse on. And uh, Demetrius was saying that, like, he's so meticulous in his training and how he prepares and plans for things. Yeah. Like, his, everything is, like, very, very focused. I was thought, uh, Dan Ige, he was telling me how he went down there and he was, he's like, I never talked to anybody with kind of like the war mindset as him. It's like he mm. sees it as like a chess match. He breaks yeah. it down in that type of uh, way. It's not mm. like, oh, let's just go out there, see red, whatever happens, happens. He's like, yeah. no, he does this, this, and this. Even with the uh, – I said I had uh, breakfast with him once before the Sean Brady fight, and he was like, let's watch a little tape on him. Let's, let me look up what he what he does. And just like watching one tape of Sean Brady, he's like, oh, well, he stands like this. I think you should could do this. This low kick will be perfect right here. But uh, just seeing how he breaks down, how he talks to people, it just tells me that being a coach and being at his gym, he'll get deeper and deeper and deeper into those little aspects of the fight that a lot of people don't really care about or look at. A lot of I know a lot of fighters that they'll never even watch tape of somebody they're going to fight. They'll never. They're just going there with the mindset of if I'm in shape and I'm on my bus, I'm going to win. Yeah, I think he's one of the great coaches out there. I think Farasa Hobby is probably, I mean, he's one of my all-time favorites, if not my favorite. But I think there's just a few guys like that, like Henry Cejudo, you know, that are just like, they're next-level coaches. They yeah. just have this mindset. That just That's the most important thing, I feel like. It's not all about toughness. And right. I've had coaches that are telling me, like, oh, well, this guy never fought before. Why are you going to think that he's a good coach? But... You don't need to be a fighter or that. Some people are just better at understanding and breaking down fights in general right. than having to go in there and fight. Some people yeah, can teach, like some people can fight. Some of the great coaches, like think about guys like Teddy Atlas, wasn't known as a great boxer. Amazing coach. Yeah. You know, like there's uh, Emmanuel Stewart, wasn't known as a great boxer, but amazing coach, one of the greatest coaches ever. There's there's quite a few guys like that. Yeah. I mean, Eric Nixick, my yeah. coach, Mike Valley, yeah. never fought before. He's the same way. And mm -hmm. like I said, it's like, 
some people are better at teaching. Some people are better yeah. at breaking down film and seeing other guys' weaknesses. Like I know Nick was telling me that he would, he used to be a football player and he would just like bring that mindset, that game mm. plan mindset of what's their weakness. If I know these guys are good at the pass, well, we're gonna play right. pass defense. And then fighters don't think like that. For me, right. when I fought. Damian Maya, my goal is to stand a strike with you. I'm not going to grapple with Damian Maya. When I'm fighting right. Wonder Boy, I'm not going to strike with Wonder Boy. I'm going to take him down. Right. When I'm fighting these guys a certain way, I'm switching it up each time. Is John in Phoenix now? Is he training down there? He was. Uh, I know he was down there. He said he was down there for visiting. Because he was with Jackson Winkle, John. Yeah. They had a falling out, so he left. And then I think he was doing stuff out of his garage, but then now he was down with crazy. Cejudo training yeah. down there with them now too. I think I'm not sure if he's doing his full camp there, but I know he was doing some stuff there. One the thing he's done right is put that weight on slowly. Yeah, that's the one thing he's done right because he's got accustomed to being 255 pounds and walking around real big and heavy, and he looks real big and heavy. He looks like a heavyweight. He doesn't look like a light heavyweight that gained weight. Yeah, he looks like a fucking heavyweight. And. I'm wondering who he's sparring with mm. because, you know, there's this being in the gym and being who you are, John Jones, you know, there's people like want to see how he is and a million people yeah. are trying to get an inside scoop of, oh, how does he look? How does he look? Mm -hmm. And we really haven't heard anything like that yeah. from uh, any of the little uh, birds on somebody's shoulder or something like yeah. that. So I'm wondering if he's actually sparring with anybody, training with anybody, or if he just has that much loyal teammates that are not going to say a word about it. Until he wants to. I don't know. It's a good question because if he's going to fight a guy like Cyril Gaon, he really wants to get some movement, some some really top flight kickboxers. So, like, who does he have that he can work with like that? You know, you really yeah. want cause Cyril is so good at mixing up the kicks and the knees and the punches and the combinations, and he's so and he's so light, like the way he stands on the outside. Like, if you're going to compete against like, a guy like that, you got to get some similar looks. And how many similar looks are there out there for a guy that's 245 pounds <laughs> that can move like that? Yeah, it moves like Cyril. Yeah, there's not a lot. Yeah, interesting fight. But here's the problem. Let's say John beats Cyril Gaon, okay? And then John fights Stipe, and John beats Stipe. Then what? 